What does it cost to live an inauthentic life? Today on All About Canadian Books, author Alan Osery is here to tell us. But before we speak with him, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Alan Osery's memoir, Even the Sidewalk Could Tell, is his very brave and heartwarming story of how he came out to his wife, three children, and the world. It was published by Regent Park Publishing and Alan Thank you so much for being a guest on the show today and coming to talk about your book. Thank you for having me, Crystal. It's it, uh, been looking forward to our discussion. It's my absolute pleasure. So a big warm welcome and a happy new year. Happy new year. So Alan, you are the creative force behind the Family Bakery's innovative products. Did you approach writing your memoir the same way you approach product development? Uh, wow. So product development to me is, uh, is basically allowing a flow, a flow of new ideas, uh, being open to the world and, um, and, and making those connections and, and giving and having that space in my mind to allow magic to happen. And uh, so you observe, observe, recognize, let it kind of float, and then you see things meld. So when it comes to product development, um, you know, I, I saw bagels, I saw muesli, and I saw uh, uh, breakfast breads, and then they came and, 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 and the morning rounds were formed, for instance. Um, so when it comes to books, I, uh, the writing this book, it was definitely also connecting or allowing the flow to come through and, um, and the commitment to, to writing every day. Uh, so there is, I guess there is definitely, uh, it, it, it felt as if I wasn't writing it. I felt in the morning, I'd just get up, commit to an hour and a half or so, or to X number of words, say a thousand words a day, no matter what comes out. And, um, the flow that, that that was the important part is letting uh, the words flow. So yeah, there is some some uh, connectivity there. Okay, and you um, certainly when reading your book, um, you worked really hard to have the life that you you thought you should have, and you didn't come out until you were in your forties. What? What did it cost to you to live an inauthentic life? Um, so the, the cost uh, of it uh, got, I, I guess, the message be, became stronger uh, as time progressed. And um, at first I was busy with opening a business and we got married and then had kids. Mm -hmm. And that's where all my energy was. And uh, the matter of sexuality was kind of uh, kept uh, low, like by my subconscious. And it's a very interesting, I always find it fascinating how our minds work and our beings work. And, um, but as, as I entered my thirties and, and the business did better and the kids started growing up, uh, I think uh, the issue of sexuality began to raise its head. And I remember you know, in my mid thirties, there was this course I took and it talked about authenticity. And yeah. the, my main, my, the main message that came from that was I, I couldn't say the words, but I knew I'm inauthentic with myself and my surroundings. Mm -hmm. and, and from there, uh, it was a little time uh, until, until I, uh, it affected my relationship with my wife at, at the time. So there was, uh, it was kind of growing and growing. I think, uh, you know, I'm thankful for the life I have and had. Very, very thankful. Um, so I'm trying not to look back and hoping that it changed. It changed. Um, so it was, it was perfect the way it was, but when uh, I had to deal with the, the message and the, I, I, I did, so. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's so important because so many people, are living in authentic lives and are afraid. Um, what, it, what advice do you have for someone who, who, who is living an inauthentic life? 
I think that a lot of us don't notice we live an inauthentic life until, mm -hmm. so you asked, I'm, I'll, I'll answer your previous question now, kind of, but uh, there are like waves of terror and fear creeping up at, in unexpected times. That was one of the signs, yeah. um, a, a very strong one. And um, I think that our body sends us messages and, and we need to be open to, to seeing those messages. It's not just something physical many times, it is a message, uh, but it is really hard. It's not easy when we live in an inauthentic life, we live in a trajectory, I'd say of, you know, maybe our culture, maybe uh, what we were told by our parents, maybe um, what we think we're expected to be. And I'm not talking only about sexuality, it could be many other things, it probably is more like sexuality is for five to 10% of the population. Um, and uh, so, so but, but there are many, many other things. So just listen to those messages and, and be cognizant to them and try and uh, to understand them. Um, and have you found once you set your book out into the world, have you had a lot of feed, positive feedback from others? Yes, it's uh, mind blowing. And, and not only, I mean, the, the LGBTQ plus, uh, uh, I guess, crowd, it resonated very strongly, even though, you know, many came out at earlier ages, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they have, uh, you know, resonated, a lot of what I talked about resonated to them. But also straight people who who have who are in mar mar marriages that are problematic or went through uh, harsh divorces or uh, people who are in, not in the right place in their life with work. Um, a lot of what was written there in the book is uh, is speaking to them, and I think it's kind of it's sometimes better to read about someone else's problems. So this is not my pride. Like for, I, I don't have a sexuality issue, so it, it's not triggering me. But then by reading what, what I went through, I think the, the, the message is, there, there are common messages there for, for everyone and common triggers and experiences that we go through when we're living an inauthentic life. Yes, yes. And I think one of the things that I really um, appreciated in your novel was how you and your family were able to come together and work together and maintain, you know, your Friday night family, family dinners. And, and I think that was a really beautiful message as well. The important Thank you. family. Yeah. I think they, as much as we kept that, it kept us together. Also those yeah. uh, routines. I have a friend uh, who is going through uh, now um, marital issues and uh She's like, Alon, your book is, uh, is, is helping me with dealing with the day-to-day -day right now and, and how I go about things. And um, I, I love that because you know, it has no, no issues with sexuality, but kids come first. We, you know, we're, we're still, we're still going to be family forever, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and let's keep that in mind. And, uh, and, and that's definitely the message. Today, my ex and I talk two, three times a week, just mm -hmm. a chat on the phone. Other than, of course, we have a daughter that we, I mean, two sons who are adults now, but uh, a daughter who, who we share and, uh, but we speak, just chat and see how we're doing. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And do you have any plans to uh, write another book, Alan? I had, but now I, yeah, I, I'm giving it a little time. I want to, now I think I need to verbalize. I want to see uh, the, the art of verbalizing. So I'm going to. I had a podcast uh, last year that ended uh, talking about Toronto and Toronto businesses and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so I want to continue that and see where that goes. And um, I love writing. I love, love, love writing. But I want to wait. I want to have kind of a, an idea and be passionate about something. And I think something will, will come out from that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially because you're so in tune to your body and all of the signs that are coming inward. So it'll be it'll be fun to see what you come up with next. Yeah, it's almost like I, I'm kind of going with flow, but also directing it. So it's uh, I'm also taking action, but also being aware of what I should do and uh, just waiting to see what what works. To me, this book, um, I never imagined I'd write a book, to be honest, really. I never yeah. imagined, never. Um, and it was as if I, I, I had birth and uh, the, mm -hmm. the message was supposed to come out literally and figuratively. And, mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, and go out to the world and do whatever it needs to do. That's how it feels. So when will I get pregnant again? I don't know. <laughs> we're we're well, going to see. <laughs> how long did it take you to write your memoir? Um, I'd say do, 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 eight months daily work. Yeah. And then after that, it, the, the whole process was about two years. So after the eight months, it was uh, editing and working mm -hmm. on it and, and uh, until we launched it. Okay. And one of the things I really love is 50% of your profits are donated to Friends of Ruby in Toronto. Um, for our viewers out who out there who aren't familiar with Friends of Ruby in Toronto, can you tell us a bit about this organization and what they do? Definitely. Um, Friends of Ruby is an amazing, amazing organization. They have a beautiful house, maybe 10 minute walk from me. I live in Regent Park in Toronto. Uh -huh. And um, they have a, a beautiful facility with over 20 rooms that help marginalized LGBTQ mm -hmm. uh, teens. They give them support, psychological support, room, help work. And, and these are teens that were kicked out of their home for being who they are, who, uh, how they were born and lived on the street. And um, if they didn't have this organization, they would, they would have, have a horrible life and they have a second chance uh, to succeed and contribute to society and be a part of society. So I, I so believe in it. And um, I'm really happy that 50% uh, of, like I'm not making money on this book. It's basically <laughs> expenses and friends of Ruby, uh, but the message is so, so important. I'm fortunate that we have a business and uh, I have a couple of businesses that we work in and uh, we do okay. So this is definitely um, do as much good as, as I can uh, within with this book. So yeah, and the message of supporting Friends of Ruby is very important. Oh, Thank you for asking about that, yes. Oh, you're welcome. And for our viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box to Friends of Ruby's website. So if you want to donate or just learn more about them, you have that opportunity. And also, of course, I'll put links down below in that description box to Alan's website as well. So you can purchase a copy of his incredibly brave, heartwarming memoir. Well, oh, there we go. Even the sidewalk could tell. Yes. And it's on Amazon also. So that's easy, an easy purchase. And Alan, thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I really appreciate your time and I enjoyed learning about Friends of Ruby and uh, your new product <laughs> and also just so much about your book. I, I, it's really, really brave of you to share your story with the world. So I, I commend you. Thank you, Crystal. It, was, it wasn't an easy process and I never thought this could happen, but it did. And uh, I'm happy that it did. Well, and you know, Alan, what a wonderful way to kick off 2022 for people out there. You know, what an inspiring message, you know, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, again, so many things happen, which I never thought could happen. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to share that message also. Okay. So happy new year, everyone. And, happy new year. And thank you, Alan. And thank you for watching.